Hi there, welcome back. If you are a follower of the videos on my channel, you'll be aware that I'm working on this Griffin amplifier. It's a Griffin power amp and it has practically two separate channels, so it's almost dual mono. And the one particular feature is that it only has balanced inputs. So it's got left and right balanced inputs, left and right speaker out. Now, you can test these balanced inputs using a uh, normal single-ended supply from a signal generator or from an audio source, but um, I really do prefer to test the balanced function. And while I've come up with a way of testing it using a uh, signal generator app on the iPad or iPhone, and I have a video of that where I explain how that is done, I do prefer to actually test this thing with music at some point very soon. So I decided that it would be very handy to build a balanced line driver for the workbench. Now, if you don't know, balanced line driver takes a normal signal, which is uh, signal and ground, and it converts it to a balanced signal, which is ground plus signal minus signal. So usually used for uh, profession in professional equipment generally, but not exclusively, to reduce noise pickup, common mode noise pickup on cables. Now, these cables here are not going to have a problem with noise because the distances are really very, very small, but I do want to use the balanced input as a test for audio. So what I decided to do is build the balanced line driver, and uh, which means I can feed in a left and right channel signal from a stereo source, and I will have a left and right balanced output to test this guy with. So, nothing too mysterious there. I'll just go through the procedure and um, it might be useful if you need the same piece of equipment. The schematic I used is one of many available on the web at the moment. It's by no means my design. Uh, you'll find this described by people like uh, Elliott Sound Products. You'll find it on app notes of the ICs. You'll find it on all sorts of uh, sources where someone has needed a line driver. This uses a dual op amp per channel. So there's two of them, left channel, right channel. The channels are identical. So I'll just describe to you the one channel, the left channel in this case. So we have the signal coming in. There's a resistor to ground, which creates a ground reference and also gives it a input impedance rating about 10K. So it's the impedance that your line driver, whatever you are sending the signal from is going to see. A 1K resistor to the positive input of half of the um, op amp. I've got in this case an NE5532. You could use all sorts of op amps. The TL072s are actually quite good. The quality of the op amp will determine just how precise and how fast and how accurate your uh, XLR, your balance signal is going to be relative to the input signal. But the differences are going to be negligible in my case because this is for test purposes. Then what we have here is a unity gain buffer. So the signal coming in here is just coming out here. And this acts as a buffer, nothing more. What it then does is it goes to the hot output through a 100 ohm resistor. This here is to avoid uh, oscillations and also it actually acts as a sort of a short circuit protection. If this thing shorts the ground, you've got a 100 ohm load minimum. The same signal goes through that resistor 10K into this inverting op amp with a 10K feedback resistor, which is another unity gain. So what we actually have here is signal A comes in here, comes out of here as A, goes in here as A, comes out here as minus A. So what you have coming out of this op amp is the inverted version of that signal coming out of that op amp, which means you've got signal, inverted signal, and common ground, which is precisely what a balanced signal is relative to the line signal coming in. The uh, power supply needs to be very, very well regulated. And also, preferably, as I've done in this case, on the board itself, where you build this, put in another two filter capacitors. These are going to be smaller, probably 100 uh, microfarads, one for the positive supply to ground and the other one from the negative supply to ground. I will then feed the supply lines with um, a plus and minus 15 volts in my case, but it can be really anything that the op amp will tolerate and work well under. 
I'll probably start by just using two 9 volt batteries. It's fine for now. These two capacitors here are one for each op amp. They are to decouple high frequency signals and noise and help with uh, stability. These are wired or soldered very, very close, as close as you can to the power pins of the op amp, which are pin four and eight. So that's our one channel. And as I said, the other channel is identical. Now I decided to build two channels on one board and I have a lot of these boards lying around. This was bought as one pack from some guy on eBay. They've lasted a long time, probably will last another long time. And they actually work very well. They're very easy to solder on. You have to take care of you with a few things because these are through connectors. So if you want to pass a wire at the top, be aware that if it touches that, it'll get through to the bottom. That's just the one thing you've got to be careful about. But I decided to design the board to design the layout of, uh, of the circuit chosen to fit exactly on this board. And the best way to do this, I've found, is to use Eagle, the CAD software. I put in the schematic and I then do a board layout as if I'm going to do a PCB, except that I keep all the network, the grid, identical to what I have here. I count the grid points and then I make sure that everything fits in here. Then I can use the drawings that um, I get off the software to assist me in making the exact layout, like this. So basically we have our board here, and that dimension is uh, actually just the pin sections, as is the vertical one. But I've actually gone one step further and um, I did a print screen of the actual layout from the layout software, which helps a lot better. Let me show you. This is a screenshot of the board layout from Eagle. Once I've laid out the board and I do it within those red lines, which um, is the limit of the size, the physical size of the board that I'm going to use. I then do the layout and uh, I can then use this as a reference, literally by counting the number of holes uh, starting from the left and I know exactly where to lay out the components. The reason I do this is so that I don't start laying out components, soldering them and then find that I need space at the end or that I've got too much space at the end. It helps me. It's a method I use all the time when I want to do something quickly. It also shows me the wiring that I need to do underneath and on top in some cases. It works very well. And here's the final result. The uh, board has got only one op amp in, left channel. Everything fit nicely, exactly as it's drawn in that screenshot. There are the supply wires. That's uh, the uh, negative supply, positive supply, and ground. And then on the other side, we've got the um, inputs, left input on the top. That's the left output, balanced followed by the right input going at the bottom and the right output balanced. So it's all there. I've got these two inputs on a dual uh, RCA, but that's going to be put separately later on. And then the, RCA, the uh, XLRs will be fitted next to the respective RCA input, so it all fits logically. Just one bit of uh, advice. The RCAs are pretty normal. There's no real polarity per se. And the XLRs, the usual thing is that you use a male output and female input. So the pins always point in the direction of the signal. Now, as you can see here, the underside, it works out very cleanly. Take your time, bend things properly, beware of shorts, and it should all work out. And it did. You'll see. Right, so here we have the test setup. One kilohertz sine wave, one volt RMS coming out of the signal generator into this RCA. That RCA comes into the one channel, in this case the left input, the one that I've got the op app in, and the result should come out of this XLR. Now I've got the uh, scope probes connected to the hot and cold pins of the XLR. I'm powering it with the bench supply with plus 15 volts, minus 15 volts, and ground. Let's have a look at the scope. I'm going to activate this signal generator, 
and power on the circuit and there we go there's a hot signal a cold signal and that's exactly what we expect from a balanced line driver the amplitude is identical 1 volt RMS for each coming out so we have no gain and no attenuation and these are both measured reference to ground so we get 1 volt and minus 1 volt if you actually reference them to each other you get 2 volts RMS and that's another characteristic of the balanced signal in terms of amplitude from the hot to the cold you have same frequency same signal but you actually have double the amplitude right this is one hell of a lot of waffling for a very very simple project I hope it's useful to you if you do need a line driver if you do need to ever test um, a amplifier or any device with a balanced input and you only have a normal single-ended input I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it's useful to you. It's certainly going to come in handy on my bench because occasionally I need to do the conversion. And uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you back soon. Bye for now.